populations within ecosystems change over time in response to a variety of factors. We've all seen a graph like this. This is the graph of an exponential function. In nature, we see some examples of exponential relationships. The increase in carbon dioxide concentrations is increasing exponentially. The early stages of disease epidemics see exponential growth. And it also describes the number of times I swear over the time I grade FRQs. To understand this graph, we need to look at a few factors. N is a variable that always represents number. In this case, we're looking at population growth, so it's the number of individuals. NO represents the number of individuals at time zero. And R represents the growth rate. Notice as I increase the growth rate, the faster my population begins to increase in size. Exponential growth assumes there is nothing limiting the growth or the maximum size of a population. As a result, it's not seen in natural environments. The size of a population, how quickly it grows, is always limited by the availability of resources and space, both of which are finite over all scales of time. When the resources needed for population growth are plentiful, the growth rate and maximum population size is higher. When resources are scarce, the growth rate and maximum potential size of the population are smaller. Every population has a carrying capacity, or the maximum number of individuals an area can support. The carrying capacity is determined by density-independent factors. Density-independent factors exert their influences on a population size regardless of the population's density. These are generally natural disasters like severe weather events or pollution. They exert an influence on the size of the population regardless of the size of the population. And then there are the density dependent factors. These are factors that affect the growth rate of a population differently depending on how dense the population already is. These include things like competition and disease. The more individuals, the greater the competition for resources. And the more individuals live in close proximity to each other, the faster diseases can spread through a population. The effect of these population limited factors and the carrying capacity can also be represented on a graph. Here, the dotted line represents the carrying capacity which is abbreviated with the variable k. This is called a logistic growth curve. Notice how the closer the population gets to its carrying capacity, the slower the growth of the population becomes. This is a reflection of density dependent factors exerting their influence on the growth rate of the population as its density becomes closer packed. The same trends in growth rate apply to logistic growth. The greater the size of the original population, the faster the carrying capacity is reached. The higher the growth rate, the faster the population reaches its capacity. The area of the logistic curve that I highlighted in this graph is the biotic potential, or the maximum growth rate of a population under optimal environmental conditions. Usually, there will always be some portion of a population's growth that is exponential. Should a population overshoot and go above the carrying capacity, the depletion of resources results in a dieback of the population back to below the carrying capacity. Now, if a population stays above the capacity for long enough, the degradation of resources may even lead to the carrying capacity itself decreasing. Some species reproduce faster than others and have different strategies for raising their offspring. K-selected species are ones that tend to have low reproductive rates. These organisms tend to be relatively large, have few offspring, expend a lot of energy when raising their offspring, 
and mature after many years of an extended youth. Competition for resources in case-selected species habitat is usually relatively high. An example of a case-selected species are elephants. Elephants don't reach reproductive age until they're about 14 years of age and give birth to only one calf at a time. They have long lifespans and typically don't grow to full size until they're about 30 years old. Our selected species are species that tend to have very high reproductive rates. These organisms tend to be small, they expend minimal energy when raising their offspring, if any at all, they tend to mature very early and have shorter lifespans. Competition for resources in our selected species habitats is typically relatively low. An example of an our selected species is rabbit. Rabbits reach reproductive maturity within just five months of age and have about 12 babies per litter. Bunnies become independent of their parents in only three weeks. But just because organisms reproduce quickly, it doesn't necessarily mean their population will grow quickly. Because our selected species have minimal parental care, most offspring probably won't make it to adulthood. Their early survivorship is low. Survivorship curves show the number or proportion of individuals surviving to each age group for a given species. There are three types of survivorship curves. In a type 1 curve, many of the organisms survive childhood and make it to adulthood. The chance of dying increases as these organisms get older. This is very typical of large mammals. Skipping to a type 3 survivorship curve, very few organisms survive their early stages of life, but they tend to survive a long time once they manage to maturity. This is very typical of plants, for example. Type 2 survivorship curves are linear, and what that really means is that your probability of dying at a certain age simply increases for every year those organisms are alive. This is very typical of birds, where they have slightly different risks in predators between their egg, fledgling, and adult uh, life cycles. Next video, we're going to discuss how populations of humans develop.